broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's workshop on how you can launch your small business with customer-focused marketing. And of course, this workshop is brought to you by the Grow with Google program. If this is the first time you're attending one of these sessions, Grow with Google is an initiative to help people prepare for work, find jobs, and grow their businesses online. And these presentations are usually given in collaboration with partner host organizations. And we have two partner host organizations here with us today, and I will have them introduce themselves shortly. In this workshop, we're going to talk about the basics of customer-focused marketing to help you launch a successful business. And if you are already in business, there are definitely some tips that you can implement immediately after this workshop to ensure that your marketing is customer focused as well. Before we go any further, let me have my organization host with you guys and share all of the resources that are available to you through their organizations. And of course, they also host these workshops. So Lisa, do you wanna kick things off? Sure. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for Tia. Um, I am Lisa Tumbleson Davis, and I'm with Adams Brown Community Action Partnership, or ABCAP for short. We have a business development department where we offer small business classes to individuals who would like to start a business or are currently operating a business. We offer a variety of trainings. We have a business plan writing class, computer classes, social media classes, a variety of workshops. We do financial literacy training. And we also offer one-on-one -on -one technical assistance to small business owners. Okay, thank you so much, Ying. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ying. I'm the executive director at Tech Incubator at Queens College. Very happy to co-host this Grow with Google webinar with Patia and Lisa. At Tech Incubator, we help entrepreneurs, startup founders, and small business owners launch, grow, and scale their businesses. We offer business advice and uh, digital services to businesses through our advisor and mentor network and our internship programs. Um, for the new year, we're having uh, several new programs, uh, one founder fellowship program for growth companies, and we also have a co-starters core program for early stage um, entrepreneurs. And we have a weekly event called the One Million Cups that's uh, particularly for uh, small business owners and entrepreneurs to come and uh, gather and uh, share their experiences. I'm gonna drop um, my contact info and some of the events information in the chat and uh, very happy to, uh, to be connected with you guys. Thank you, Patia. Thank you so much, Ying. Thanks so much. Okay, if you're watching this webinar live, you can access part closed captions by opening a separate browser window and visiting the URL shown on this slide, which is g.co slash grow slash patia. If you click the gear icon at the top of the browser window, you can change the formatting of the captions to suit your preferences. Today, we have Kim with us, who will be providing live closed captioning throughout the session. Kim, thank you for supporting us today. So here's what we're going to cover over the next 45 minutes an hour. We'll introduce the marketing funnel and the customer journey and explain how your marketing can influence who does business with you. Because as we know, the goal of marketing is to attract your ideal target customer. You'll learn how to reach prospective customers and build awareness for your brand, as well as how to engage your customers during their decision process to influence their consideration. We'll also cover some methods of the conversion and how you can build customer loyalty and encourage brand advocacy. So let's start by talking about the marketing funnel and the customer journey. Great marketers don't make stuff, they make meaning. And this is one of my favorite quotes from Seth Godin. He is a marketing guru. If you guys are not following him, you definitely should. I really like Mr. Godin because he has the ability to dispel um, easy to implement best practices that any business can use. And so a lot of times people like him, 
you know, they, <laughs> if you have a million dollar marketing budget, of course, you can do amazing things. What I like about Mr. Godin is that he has the ability to dispel best practices and advice that even someone who's on a shoestring budget can easily implement and see measurable results. So this quote by Seth Godin gets to the heart of it. The job of marketing is to make your products and overall brand meaningful for your customers, because that's what creates a customer base that is loyal to your brand. And this is why they would choose your products over others. So how do we get started doing this as small business owners? Well, one of the great things I like about delivering these Google presentations is that the examples used are always small business owners, just like you, so that they're easy to relate to. And you can also, if you're interested enough, go to their websites and check out what they're doing marketing wise and see how everything that I cover in this workshop using them as an example, you'll be able to see it live as well. So meet Shalom Thomas and Sharika Winter. They're the founders of a business called TW Tote. And again, you can check them out at TWTote.com. Shalom couldn't find a professional way to carry his lunch to work. He tried a paper bag, not very chic, a plastic bag, even worse, and even a Velcro neoprene mail bag. However, none of them quite reflected his style. So what he did is he looked for a professional lunch bag online. And there was another problem here. They were options, however, he couldn't find anything that he liked at a reasonable price. So like most small businesses, like the genesis of most small businesses, he decided to take matters into his own hands and T.W. Tote was born. Like most new entrepreneurs, Shalom and Sharika started out with passion and a great idea. Now they both had design and engineering skills and they were able to build a product that people wanted. However, what they were missing was marketing knowledge. Many of their decisions were based on gut instinct. And that can be a great way to start. However, over time, you really need to understand things like stats and metrics and conversion patterns in order for you to be a successful business. So they were able to identify and create the product that met a real need. However, what they were missing is that they didn't know how to make their products meaningful for their customers. They soon realized that they needed to get great at marketing quickly. So this is what they needed to do. They needed to establish a brand that would reach more customers, sell more products, and build loyalty. So I just want to know, it's, you know, I'm always interested to know who's in the room since we can't see each other. So I'm going to ask for you guys to share in the Q&A box, how many of you are already in business? Just let me know. You can just say, hey, I'm in business. And um, how many of you just have a business idea, right? Um, either or, this is a great session for you to attend because if you just have a business idea, what you're learning today can help you to start off on the right foot. And if you are already in business, there are definitely things or that you can tweak or change to help you to be more successful going forward. Okay, so Rashida says she has a business idea. Joseph still has, is in the idea phase. Um, Christine is saying, um, just established a business, no movement yet. Joan, business idea. Benny, he's the veteran here. He's been in business for nine years. Benny, I would love to hear some of your thoughts as we go through the presentation to see if you've been doing some of these things. And Danielle as well, just has a business idea. Okay, great, I like it. We have a mixed bag in the house. All right, so let's keep going. At its core, marketing is an ongoing effort to create meaning for your customers. It answers questions like, why should customers buy from your company? What's in it for them? What makes your products and services and company great? Why should they listen to your advice? Also, what's your backstory? You know, the starting point for many businesses, especially small businesses, are usually, you know, there was a pain point, right? Kind of like TW Tote. There was a gap in the market that I wanted to fulfill. I noticed that even though my competitors were doing X, Y, Z, they still weren't quite hitting the mark. 
And so this is why I decided to start my business. So what you have to do is become really great at storytelling. Storytelling telling helps impart meaning to your products and brand, and it can connect customers with your business on an emotional level. Now, when customers buy from you, you want them to feel good about their purchases. Now, your marketing, the goal of your marketing should be about building relationships, developing trust, building credibility, so that your potential customers are inspired to buy from you and not only to buy from you that one time. I really like to stress this because it is seven times more expensive for you to keep to continuously have to keep attracting new customers than it is for you to keep existing customers happy. So staying in touch with them throughout the customer journey in an effective way will always help them to think of you first and to keep coming back. Now it's useful to think of marketing as a funnel. And this is, this is what I want you guys to kind of like visualize. You should be thinking of developing a process to take people who are unfamiliar with your products or services and turn them into paying customers or clients. Overall, a main goal of the marketing funnel is to help a business accomplish their goals, whether that be for profit, revenue, new customers, or something else that's especially meaningful for your business. The first benefit of this framework is that it considers the customer journey. So instead of trying random marketing strategies or sticking with a plan that focuses only on sales, the marketing funnel encourages you to consider the experience a buyer has with the brand. Now, the overall customer journey is the sum of the experiences consumers go through when interacting with the brand. Now, think of your favorite brand and think of the process that you went through, starting with being aware to finding out more information. That's a consideration to conversion when you finally bought. And then based on the experience that you had, once that conversion happened, right, either you became a loyal customer or not. So a lot of times when we're trying to grasp these concepts as small business owners, we have to like get out of the small business owner mode and think of yourself as your customer and think as, as a customer, I should say, and think of the steps that you go through or you have gone through with the brands that you are actively supporting. Okay. Dial in the back a bit. Awareness is the first phase. And this is when a potential customer discovers you through maybe word of mouth, a Google search, or an ad. Next, they may move into the consideration phase. And this is when customers weigh whether they'll buy from you or your competitor, whether they'll buy your type of product or something similar, or whether they'll buy it all. Sometimes when people have too many options, guess what? They do nothing. And that's the worst possible outcome for all of this because nobody wins. Nobody wins their business. They still haven't made a decision. Now, if the customer decides to become your customer, they then move into the conversion phase. Now, your goal here, right, is to sustain their interest so that they continue to be repeat customers over a lifetime. Now, this brings us to the final phase, which is loyalty. And this is when customers are so thrilled with their experience that they always turn to your brand first, and most importantly, they recommend it to others. And that is when you really have a business that becomes self-sustaining. Now, your job as a marketer is to influence customers at every phase of the customer journey. At the awareness phase, your marketing should be focused on reaching customers where they are so they become aware of your brand. Now, the key thing here is where they are. You have to know where your ideal customers are interacting, specifically in the online space, so that you can position yourself where they already are. During consideration, your marketing should be about engaging potential customers by doing things like answering questions and building relationships. In the conversion phase, your marketing is about influencing your leads and converting them into paying customers. And lastly, sustaining contact with customers 
who had a good experience can build loyalty and turn them into brand advocates. Now, at every phase of the customer journey, you have the opportunity to persuade them to move forward. So the better the marketing, the greater the influence and the longer the journey. Okay, so let's talk about the first phase and how you reach prospects and build brand awareness for your small business. Now, the customer journey may begin when someone needs something and they turn to Google to do a search. That's what we all do, right? Now, awareness could also be triggered through word of mouth, advertising, trade show marketing, or other types of communication. Now, no matter how your customers find you, they likely continue their research by searching for your business online in other areas. So if they started with the Google search, they're definitely going to check out your website. They're going to go to your social media. Do you have a YouTube channel? Do you have any reviews, right? This is when the consideration process starts because they go digging for more information. Now, to reach prospective customers, you first need to understand who they are so that you know what, how to reach them. You need to start by identifying clearly who needs your products, then build a brand that sparks their interest. Once you've defined your ideal market and built a solid brand, it's time to get your business set up online. So let's talk about each of, this concept, of these concepts a little more in detail. When it comes to identifying your customers, it's good to think about whose problems you want to solve. Who will want the products and brand experience you'll create? Understanding exactly who your prospective customer is should guide your marketing. Your brand and products may be useful to just about anybody. However, word of caution here, especially for those who are just starting out. If you don't focus on your most likely customers, what will happen is that you end up spreading your message and money too thin. So that's where market segmentation comes into play. It helps you narrow in. You can start with demographic segmentation, which of course includes things like age, gender, ethnicity, religion, income, and education level. But you also want to know about their interests, their values, their personality and lifestyle, and these are called psychographics. Geography, of course, location-based information should also be taken into consideration. So you may want to know the size and density of region or neighborhood that they live in, things like the language that they speak. And if you're selling clothing, right, definitely the climate of the area they're living in. Lastly, behavioral segmentation involves understanding the frequency of your customers' purchases, their usage of your products, and most importantly, the level of their loyalty. So let's do a fun exercise together. I love doing customer personas. So customer personas represent a group of similar people in a desirable audience. Now they're fictional users whose goals and characteristics represent the needs of a larger group of users. Customer personas can help you to focus on creating marketing materials for the people who are most likely to buy your products or services. My favorite part of doing this is naming this, these personas associating a photo with them, so you're actually building a person. These are common marketing practices. This is one of the things that I really love to do um, in terms of you know, setting up a brand for success. So consider this customer persona. Her name is Metro Michaela. She's in her mid thirties. She's single and she lives alone in a large city. She's college educated and has a mid level management job in the fashion industry. She likes to have friends over to cook and they also love wine. She dreams of traveling, but right now she's spending most of her time in the city shopping at local boutiques and farmers markets. Now, how would you market a product to Metro Michaela? Think about how you would influence Michaela along the customer journey. What channels would you use to reach someone like her? What type of imagery, words, or tone of voice would appeal to her? What type of product attributes do you think would be the most important to her? And you guys can share again in, in the Q&A if you like. So you're, you're imagining that you have to 
market a product to this customer persona, Metro Michaela. You have all of the key points on the slide. Um, for those of you who are not yet in business, if this could be a possible persona that you, you know, depending on what product or service you're hoping to launch, then this can actually be an exercise that you can use in real life. And so the questions are, what channels would you use to reach her meaning? Social media, email marketing, like what television ads, like how, you know, how do you think somebody like her is engaging with brands that she supports? What types of imagery, words, or tone of voice do you think you would need to use to appeal to her? And what type of product attributes would you think would be important for someone who fits this customer persona? Okay, so I can see that you guys are thinking about it because nobody has responded. That's absolutely fine. By the way, I forgot to say this at the beginning of the, beginning of the presentation. I was just so ready and raring to go. Um, everybody who attends today's session will be getting a copy of the recording as well as a hard copy of the presentation. So you guys don't have to worry too much about taking copious notes because you will be getting the follow-up so that you can have all of the information um, with you as you move forward. Okay, once you identify your customers, it's time to create a brand that appeals to them. Now, if you guys have attended any marketing class, you already know branding is more than just choosing a logo that you like. A good brand identity connects emotionally to your prospective customers, and so your logo design and brand colors should convey certain feelings and even inspire certain actions. Graphic elements communicate values and interests and should represent what your prospective customers aspire to. Your brand's messaging tone and voice should do the same helping to communicate what your brand stands for, how it relates to your potential customer, as well as how it aligns with their values. Now, these shared values and ideals create the basis of your brand. Before you choose a logo or colors, you need to define your values and ideals. Going back to our friends at TW Tote, TW Tote positions itself as a luxury but approachable brand. They wanted their products to be accessible while meeting their standards for quality and style. Now they use these characteristics to describe who they are, what they want to be, and how they want to be perceived. Now these values can be written into a brand position and statement that establishes the foundation for all of your marketing efforts. So what is a brand position and statement? Your brand positioning statement is your North Star and can also be used externally in your marketing. It should include the customers you serve, your audience, what you offer, and how it addresses your customers' needs. It should also clearly art articulate how you're the best at what you do and what differentiates you from your customers, which of course is your unique value proposition. You should also have a clear brand promise or mission. Brand position and statements need to be brief, clear, and memorable. Good branding creates a cohesive, powerful experience for your customers, and it begins here. So here's a template you can use for your own brand positioning statement. Of course, the words inside of the blue brackets are placeholders, and you will replace the five placeholders with words that apply to your brand, of course, including the audience, the customer challenge or need, your company name, your product or service, and why it's different along with your brand promise or mission. A lot of people like to take a snapshot of this slide in case they wanna work with, on this immediately afterwards. If that's the case for you, go ahead and do so. Now, in the case of TW Tote, the audience is working professionals. The customer challenge or need is a stylish and a functional lunch bag. The company name, of course, is TW Tote. And the product or service or why it's differentiated is because it's a fashionable insulated vegan leather tote. 
their brand promise for mission is that they feel that everyone deserves a luxurious and functional lunch bag that the entire family can use. So putting all of those pieces together, we have their brand positioning statement that says TW Totes is for working professionals who need a stylish and functional lunch bag. TW Tote provides fashionable, insulated vegan leather totes because everyone deserves a luxurious and functional lunch bag the entire family can use. So this is a really great exercise for you to do if you haven't launched yet. And for anybody who is already in business, you may want to use this template to tweak what you may already have been using. All right, so I just saw the Q&A lineup. Um, and Emmanuel, he, oh, you were responding to how you would market to Michaela, great. So Emmanuel is saying if he was trying to target Michaela, he would use um, these channels, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Google Ads, and associated with aspirational topics and travel. Emmanuel, I'm gonna have to take you in the road with me. Those are perfect answers, you got it. Okay, somebody is saying, are you able to show the brand positioning templates again? Absolutely, I think it's just one slide back. Um, so this is the template. So if you guys wanna take a quick snapshot, go ahead. Um, if not, don't worry about it. Like I said, everybody who attended today's session will get the link to download the recording as well as a hard copy of the presentation. Okay, let's keep pushing on. We're not even halfway through this presentation yet. It's a lot, it's a lot. Okay, so once you've defined your prospective customers and designed a brand that speaks to them, it's time to get your business online. Now you may find an audience through existing platforms like social media sites, or seller platforms like Etsy or directory sites. And sometimes, depending on the kind of business you have, there may be these niche sort of sites or platforms that support maybe only accountants or plumbers or doctors, right? You have to do your research to see what the possibilities are. Now, these existing platforms can help you reach specific customers, but remember that using them is like renting an office. You don't own that space, you lease it. That means that the owner can change the space, raise the rent, or even go out of business, which will leave you in a lurch. If, you're, if you build your brand's presence only on leased platforms, you risk the chance of your sole connection to your customers being wiped out at the whim of the platform. So these leased platforms should only be used as supplements to your own website. And I can't stress this enough. I always say this, many of you I know attend my sessions repetitively, right? Think of your website as the hub of a wheel, right? That is where you should, you have the most control over the way your brand shows up. This is where you should be capturing leads. This is where you should be driving traffic to the most. And all of the additional channels or like the spokes of a wheel, the spokes of the wheel, right? So all of these additional channels should be linked to your website away as well as driving traffic, but never only depend on platforms that you don't own to be the main drivers of your business. Now, building your own website ensures your own that you own your online property. You will then have full control over its contents and how it behaves, and you can also grow and customize it as your own business grows. Also, you will have control over your website and you can have it optimized so that search engines assist people to find the website, right? And Google, of course, is the usual suspect here, so that you are found by people who are searching online and possibly in buying mode for your products and services. Now, Google also offers a way to get your business online by creating a free business profile. The business profile displays critical business information to searchers across Google search and maps and is optimized for different devices. Now, this will not replace a website. Again, remember all of these things are additional complementary, but it can help you stand out in search results and drive potential customers to your site. Creating a business profile helps you control the details Google displays, like your business hours, contact information, store locations, especially if you have several locations, photos, videos, and more. 
There are also built-in marketing features to communicate with your customer throughout the customer journey. And you can find out more by visiting google.com slash business. Now, once consumers discover your brand, some move into the next phase of the customer journey, which would be consideration. Here, you can guide customers through the process of evaluating your brand, engaging, and influencing them to learn more about you. During the consideration phase, customers are deciding whether or not they want to do business with you. They're evaluating your brand, comparing it to other choices, and gathering information to help them decide what or if they will buy. Your marketing strategy at this point should be to provide answers to their questions and other details to help them with their evaluation. Engaging your customers during the consideration phase is crucial. Here you need to learn more about their needs and wants by listening to them, asking questions, and having meaningful conversations. You need to spend time communicating and delivering valuable information and content to your customers or potential customers during this phase. Your goal during this phase is to build interest and desire in these potential customers so that they want to develop a deeper and longer relationship with your brand. So how do you do that? To learn about your customers, listen and don't make assumptions. Determine their pain points. The better you understand those needs, the better you can create solutions and communicate them. Shalom and Sharika at TW Tote discovered that their customers loved their lunch bags, but also needed different types of totes for a variety of uses. Now you can address the challenges your potential customers have with your particular industry or products or your brand specifically. Analyzing what customers are searching for online will give you insight into what they want and need. By listening and learning, you can figure out how best to serve your customers through your products and your other marketing content. Now you can use Google search to find out what your customers may be looking for. Often it's solutions for their problems. So what you need to really understand here is how your prospective customers are using search. What terms do they use that can connect them to your products or brand? Searches by TW Totes customers might be around fashionable work bags or style tips. Now these search terms become the keywords and keyword phrases that should be used regularly throughout your marketing. Most small businesses should have at least five and up to 30 keywords or phrases that they know for sure that their ideal target customers are using to search for their type of products and expertise. So for those of you who are already in business, hopefully you're using keywords. If you, if you are, I would love to see some of them in the Q&A and just explain what kind of business you have so that it makes sense. Now, this is how you will go about figuring out how your potential customers are using search. Whenever you enter a search query, you'll see a list of related searches at the bottom of the search results page. This is what's highlighted on this slide. TW Tote could type professional lunch bag into the Google search bar and then see what the related searches are. That is how you get an idea of how real life customers in real time are searching for similar products or service. Now, hint, hint, those related searches are usually good words or phrases to use in your own marketing. Now, there's also a free tool called Google Trends that can also help you find keywords and ideas for new content. Google Trends will show you the relative popularity of different search terms on Google. And if it has enough data, Trends can show a forecast of search volume and searches experiencing significant growth. You can use it to find and compare the popularity of different words and phrases, determine seasonality of different searches, and see where searches are happening geographically. That is a great 
bit of insight to have, especially the geographic sort of insight, because if you're running Google ads, you now have that intelligence, right, in terms of knowing what keywords, it, there are always different keywords being used by subsets of people, and many times geography plays a role in the different kinds of keywords that people may be using. So if you're setting up a Google ad campaign, you will want to know that, you know, if you're advertising your products um, in Boston, these are the keywords that people in Boston are using to search for your product or service. And if you're advertising your products in Canada, right, depending on the city, Ottawa, Toronto, wherever, then these are the keywords that you should be using in that specific ad campaign. You can also use it to discover related search topics and queries, and all of this information can help you see the topics that people are the most interested in. And what do you do with this information? You use all of this information to create relevant content that you will then publish on your website, in your social media, and include in all of your marketing materials. So once you know what your customer is looking for, it's time to give them what they want. The shift from listening to communicating begins when you share content that educates and inspires them. Your customers most likely don't know half of what you know about your industry, your products, your service, and even less, I would say, about your specific brand and your story. So ask yourself, what can you teach them? What can you demonstrate or instruct them in? How can you help them? How can you inspire them and provide resources? Engage with customers by giving them valuable information that proves you're a credible source of information about your industry. So what you're doing is that you are focusing on creating content that builds trust by sharing your expertise. And remember, especially on social media, right? Great content has to be relatable, likable, and shareable. Now, this type of communication doesn't necessarily have to always be about promoting your product specifically. Specifically, it's about offering information that helps them with their research. So essentially what you're doing is trading value for their attention. Okay, so I saw the Q&A pop up. I like when people engage with me as I'm doing these presentations because you know, it makes me feel like I'm not just talking to myself in the screen. So Beverly is saying, I have a small jewelry business and I use words like unique, and different. That is a great starting point, Beverly. However, I would encourage you to dive a little deeper because I feel like everybody uses unique and different. What, you gotta explain, right? What makes your jewelry unique, right? Um, is it, you know, specific types of metals that you use? Is it spe specific, um, I don't know, precious stones? Are they all handmade by you or, artisan someplace, you know? So this is a great start, right? Definitely a great start. But in addition to just saying they're unique and different, I want you to really dive a little deeper and explain why they're unique and different, okay? Um, and using Google Trends can really help you to uncover the terms that people who may be attracted to your business, the terms that they're using in real time on Google to find businesses like yours or jewelry businesses like yours if you wanna get really specific. So let's talk about getting all of this amazing content that you're gonna develop out there. You can share content in the form of copy only, which we know, copy, photos, videos, through many channels. Now, these are some of the recommended channels that you may be evaluating or already using, social media, email, YouTube, podcasting, online publishing, and of course, you've got to have your own website or blog. Now, you don't have to use all of them, of course, but all of them present an opportunity to reach different audiences in different ways. Now, think of each of these channels as a means to share your content, to grab their attention, and remember that you're only choosing the channels where your particular customers will be spending time, right? That is the main point here. 
Now, TW Tote, going back to our friends at TW Tote, TW Tote has a YouTube channel with commercial style videos talking about their product features. They also showcase special offers on social media and, of course, their blog. Now, there are lots of choices. Choose channels based on where your customers are. Remember that. And also remember to create content, right, that will inspire them to learn more and share. Ultimately, like I said earlier, you want to drive traffic back to your website and share content directly on your site. If you have a business profile on Google, you can use the post feature to share content that links back to your site. And again, you can find out more by going to google.com slash business. Now, whether you can, not whether, whatever you can dream up that's interesting, entertaining, and educational for your prospective customers, just make sure that, you know, the content, in addition to being entertaining or interesting, is also useful to them, right? And will also help them to see you as a trusted source so that they ultimately convert. Remember, no one wants to feel like they're being sold to. And that's what scares so many businesses away from marketing. But as long as your marketing is customer focused and appropriate at each phase of the journey, you're actually sharing, not selling. Provide opportunities for your customers to evaluate your brand and products through your content. Now, one page on TW Tote's website describes how their products are made and what makes them special. Um, so you remember a few, uh, let me see who it is that said she has unique jewelry. I don't like to mess with people's names. Beverly. Okay, so Beverly said that she makes unique and different jewelry. So then you can have a page on your website as well that actually explains what's different and unique about your jewelry in the same way that TW Tote does. So you can do this, of course, with an FAQ page on your website or a comparison spec sheet to understand how things may be different, um, whether it's packaging, whether it's, you know, the way, you know, your products are made, whether it's your methodology, the way you um, approach providing your services. You can do interesting things like create demo videos and educational webinars that help your customers evaluate your brand, sampling for those of you who have products, Sampling is also a great way to get the products, right, in your customer's hands. Free trials are also a way to have them experience a service possibly, right? A lot of service-based platforms have free trials where you can actually use the software um, to see how it really works before you decide to buy. And you should always be encouraging people to sign up for your email list. Through email, you can segment your audience and send personalized communications that continue nurturing your customer relationships during the consideration phase and lead to conversion for those who are, re who are ready. Um, also, and I've been doing this for 20 something years, um, in terms of the return on investment for email marketing, it has the highest return of all digital marketing. For every $1 of email marketing that's done correctly, and I'm going to stress done correctly. We're not talking about spamming people to death. We're talking about, you know, using personalization and segmentation of lists and all of that great stuff, developing nurturing campaigns. For every dollar spent on email marketing done correctly, you can expect to get about $40 return on your investment. And that has been consistent the last 20 something years, right? Social media is great, but unless you're capturing the data of the people on social media, it's a one-off transaction. Email marketing allows you to repetitively communicate with people on your list because you have their email address, messages are delivered in their inbox, and as long as you're not spamming them, they will take action over time. Now, communicating in this way with your prospective customers helps develop a relationship built on trust, credibility, and likability. Beyond sharing great content, you also need to spend time articulating that you can solve their problems. 
especially if they haven't spent money with you yet. You can influence their consideration by having conversations with them, answering questions, and being as helpful as possible during this stage. Marketing during the consideration phase can be long and it takes patience. However, if you have a consistent content strategy and dedication to engaging with your customers, then over time you're able to build a solid relationships. Let's take a look at another real world business to help us understand the third and fourth phases of the customer journey. Meet Tracy and Danny, the mother daughter team behind Wicked Good Cupcakes. In 2010, they took cake decorating classes and their passion became a business and their first store opened in October 2011. As their reputation grew, they received hundreds of shipping requests, but the one thing they struggled with is they couldn't find a way to ship cupcakes and have them arrive fresh and intact. Now that's when they came up with the big idea, cupcakes in mason jars. By filling jars with layers of cake frosting and filling, the cupcake stays fresh for, what do you know, 10 days without refrigeration and can be shipped easily. News spread and in April 2013, Tracy and Danny debuted their product on ABC's Shark Tank in front of 10 million TV viewers. Wicked Good Cupcakes, and again, you guys, all of these businesses and these Google presentations are real, and you can go take a look for yourself at wickedgoodcupcakes.com. Wicked Good Cupcakes became the go-to site to buy unique baked goods online. Now, with an appearance on a popular TV show, of course, they had achieved brand awareness, the brand awareness that they possibly could only dreamed of before, right? And they were actively engaging with their customers. The next step was to focus on increasing purchases and turning customers into brand loyal advocates. It was time for Tracy and Danny to do more marketing focused on the conversion and loyalty phases of the customer journey. They needed to learn more about their customers so they could better convert them. They needed to identify opportunities to improve their website and ways to make the entire experience, especially the checkout process, more efficient. They also needed to give their customers reasons to do what? Come back to their site, share their experiences with others, and eventually become brand advocates. With the help of Wicked Good Cupcakes, we're going to talk about the last two phases of customer journey and how your own marketing can help convert more customers during the conversion phase and turn them into brand loyal customers during the loyal phase. So let's start with the conversion phase. Once your marketing has addressed the awareness and consideration phases of the customer journey, you should have some leads who have become prospects and are ready to become paying customers. In this phase, your job as a marketer is to influence these leads and prospects to do what? Hand over the cash and become paying customers, and this process is called conversion. To convert customers, you need to figure out which leads are most likely to become customers and hone in and focus your marketing efforts on them. To do this, you need to identify the key customer actions that lead to conversion. Then, once you figure that out, you need to share the right marketing messages and a timely call to action to encourage the purchase with those who are ready to become customers. Finally, you'll convert more customers when you streamline the purchase process and make it as easy as possible for them to buy from you. So let's review these steps a little bit more in detail. So, you may be saying to yourself, well, that's great, Batia, but how do you know where, where customers are in their journey? Like, how do I know who to hone in on? Easy, you look at their actions. Certain actions signal that they are more likely to convert than others. Now, these key actions may vary depending on your business, but some common ones are signing up for your email list, submitting a form, requesting a quote, downloading content like a product brochure or watching a video, signing up for a trial or demo account, downloading your app, calling you or emailing you to schedule a consultation, or for you people who have e-commerce businesses, placing a product in your online shopping cart 
but leaving the site before making a purchase. Now, most times, why do people do, why do people abandon their carts? For me, I know it's usually a distraction. Like I'm, you know, I say, I say to myself, okay, let me sit down and do some shopping. And then before you know it, the email's going off, the phone's ringing, my seven-year-old's, you know, asking for something, the puppy, you know, is eating my homework or whatever, right? You get distracted. And so it's like, um, okay, I'll come back to this later. You know, if somebody has taken the time to put an item in a shopping cart, they're pretty qualified. One thing to note though, these important actions will not always happen online. So going back to our friends at Wicked Good Cupcakes, a key action could be visits to their cupcake truck offering samples. So when they looked into customer actions, they saw that some website visitors were placing items in their shopping cart, but not completing the purchase. Now that action signaled a higher interest level and just merely visiting the website. So what they did is they identified these visitors and they sent them coupons, giving them a nudge to complete the purchase. And again, take off your small business owner hat, put on your customer hat. These tactics are used in us every day by the brands that we support. So think about your business. What customer actions can help you identify who might be ready to become a paying customer? Now, once you've identified customers ready to make purchase, it's time to share content and calls to action designed to convert. As I mentioned earlier, Wicked Good Cupcakes sent coupons to people who abandoned their shopping carts. Now, your conversion efforts could include things like a discount or a special deal like buy one, get one free, or an exclusive offer with a more VIP feel. You could also send an invitation to special content like a webinar or event, or include customer testimonials that share more about your brand or product. Think about what else you could offer as a value-added service. Maybe free shipping or a free tutorial with a product specialist. Present these value adds in a way that sounds compelling and most importantly, time sensitive. Like you've got to do this within the next 24 hours or else you no longer have access to this offer. Good copywriting will go a long way in creating a persuasive call to action. And you also need to decide whether you're going to share this content with the audience you've identified as ready to convert. Also have to consider the marketing and advertising channels that let you reach this curated audience. You could use your email marketing platform, that's what most people do, as well as digital advertising using, for example, Google Ads. Now, there are lots of elements of going to conversion, but one of the easiest ways to convert customers is to make the purchase process as simple as possible. You should be focused on creating a hassle-free online checkout experience by reducing the number of steps, offering guests checkout as opposed to requiring sign-in, providing value-added services or benefits with purchase, and ensuring they feel great about what they're buying. When Wicked Good Cupcakes wanted to make it easier and faster for their customers to complete their purchases, they actually reduced the total number of checkout steps. They also continuously test other checkout options and tweak the process based on the results. For example, they had added the option for customers purchasing cupcakes as a gift to record a personalized video to be sent via email to the recipient. They used Google Analytics to see how these changes affected their sales and made the necessary adjustments as the data came in. Ultimately, conversion works best when you've created a stellar experience at every touch point throughout the customer journey. Now we've talked about what you should do to convert customers. Let's look at a tool that can help you accomplish it. Google Analytics is a no-cost tool that can help you identify key customer actions that happen on your website. It's one of the most popular website analytics platforms available, and the great news is that it is free. It allows you to track the customer journey on your website or app, by the way. And here are some things, some key metrics that you will have access to once you start using the tool. How people found your site, what customers do once they find you, how are they interacting, what demographic groups visit your site the most, what channels drive the most traffic, and which channels and actions drive the most conversion.
Google Analytics can help you better mark help you better market to your audience throughout the entire customer journey. Specific to the converse, conversion phase, however, Google Analytics provides insight into the actions impacting your conversion, helps you identify customers ready to convert, and lets you analyze your conversion processes so you can get more people to complete the actions that are most important to your business. And to learn more about Google Analytics, you can visit g.co slash analytics. Now, question, for those of you who are in business, do you already have Google Analytics attached to your website? I love to ask that question because I hope that if you've been in business for a while that um, you would have Google Analytics attached. Christine is saying no. Okay, so Christine, your first homework assignment after this class is to install Google Analytics on your website. You will be amazed at the level of insight and information um, that you will have access to. Okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> Another tool that can be useful for driving conversions is Google Ads. One of the advantages of digital advertising is the ability to deliver specific content to specific groups of people. So what you will do is that you'll have the ability to show ads to the right people at the right time, making it more likely that they'll convert into paying customers. For example, you can use Google Ads to put sales messages and incentives in front of people searching for products like yours. Ads can appear on Google search results and many other websites like YouTube. And the ad formats available would be your text ads, image ads, shopping ads, and video ads to name a few. There are also special types of campaigns. One you may recognize, if you've, even if you've never heard of it, is called remarketing. We are all being remarketed to. In these campaigns, your ads can appear to a potential customer after he or she visits your website. So you know when the ads follow you around, that's called remarketing. When you connect your Google Ads and Google Analytics account, you're able to create ads directly from your analytics data and learn more about the impact of your ad campaigns. And to learn more about setting up your Google Ads account, you can visit ads.google.com. Okay, final phase. We're in the final phase of our customer journey, and that would be loyalty. As in the other phases, you can influence your customer's action through focused marketing that sustains loyalty and encourages them to recommend you to others. Okay, now by giving your customers more to consume and making their experiences great, you can sustain their business and earn their loyalty. Loyal customers will always think of your brand over others, and they are also the ones who usually recommend your business to others, which in turn brings even more targeted and well-qualified customers your way. Now, all customers are not created equal. A customer who stays interested and engaged with your brand and continues shopping with you has a lot of value to your business. So how do you create more of these types of customers? Easy answer, well, the answer is easy. Actually doing it is not so easy. By providing more value to them. You might do this through consistently excellent customer service, new products, as well as different programs and incentives. Ultimately, you want to keep your customers happy, engaged, and buying from you. And remember that happy customers will often naturally tell others about their experiences. Now, building this type of customer loyalty can be done in a number of ways and relies on an entire customer experience that has been outstanding. Unfortunately, a lot of people get to this stage and this is where they fall down. So if your customers didn't have a good checkout experience, then on top of that, they had trouble with the product once they received it, or they felt ignored and unsatisfied when they contacted you after the fact, it will be almost impossible to turn them into brand loyal advocates. So at this phase, you want to focus on deepening your relationship with your customers, getting to know them, letting them get to know you, and keeping them happy and engaged. You can do things like provide top-notch customer service that will positively impact their customer loyalty. Right? Um, and also asking them for feedback, right? 
ask them what do they really enjoy about the, the interaction with your brand or the purchases that they made. All right. Lastly, you should think about ways that you can delight your customer in unexpected ways to further deepen the relationship and differentiate you from your competitors. And many ways, many, one of the, I would say, most popular ways that a, a business would do this is to develop some sort of loyalty or VIP program. Loyalty programs and incentives will help you sustain the customer loyalty you build with them and help them to feel special. Now, personalization also goes a long way, so you may also want to consider things like sending personalized notes with purchases or special offers on birthdays and anniversaries. Once your customers feel taken care of or even delighted, they'll be more open and encouraged to recommend your brand to the people that they know. And this is extremely powerful because your current customers are most likely to associate with people within the same target market, which in turn makes their friends and connections your next best customers. And in fact, 92% of customers trust word of mouth recommendations over other types of marketing and customers referred by other customers have a 37% higher retention rate. Okay, so let's talk about reviews, right? We know this because we are customers ourselves. When the first thing that we do when we hear about a new brand, what would we do? We go looking for Google reviews. And if any of you joined this webinar because you got my last minute email yesterday, what did I have in that email? At the bottom, I took a screenshot of my Google reviews from people who have attended other sessions like this one. Because at the end of the day, you can say you're the best whatever. Of course, you should think that, right? Especially if you had the gumption to start a business. But what's really powerful and important, right, and adds credibility is somebody who has interacted with you, endorsing you and saying, absolutely, right? I have interacted with this business and they are amazing. So, got to encourage your customers to leave reviews. Leaving a review on Google and interacting with your customers through your business profile is a great way to start. This allows your happy customers to become advocates for your business through the public reviews that they will leave. Remember, you should respond to your reviews in a timely professional manner because this shows your customers that your business listens to and values their feedback. Now your customers are not the only ones who can become brand advocates, employees, partners, and vendors can be great advocates as well, even if they aren't actual customers. And this is because especially employees will have intimate knowledge of your brand and can be great advocates for you. There also, there's also the paid influencer and affiliate route and influencers are typically people who have influence among your target audience and the content they share is in line with your, your brand. Influencers are paid to recommend your brand or a specific product, typically through social media. And affiliates are typically people in your industry who have a wide reach for a lot of traffic on their websites and affiliates usually receive a percentage of a sale they generate through their advocacy. Okay, so we've come to the end of our customer journey. As you can see, there's a lot of marketing you can do to influence the customer journey to ensure your potential customers become aware of you, consider you fully, complete a conversion, and finally become loyal brand advocates. Customer-focused marketing for the awareness and consideration phases of the customer journey starts by defining your customers and creating a brand that speaks to them. You'll need to get your business online in order for your customers to reach you and research you, and you need to spend time listening to prospective customers and learning about how you can communicate with them effectively. In the last two phases, this is our quick recap, in the last two phases of the customer journey, your market is focused on conversion, converting your customers and turning them into brand loyal advocates. Not all people who show interest in your brand will move into these phases. So it's important, but you guys remember, to identify the key actions that someone in the consideration phase would take that would most likely lead to conversion. And then you hone in on those people and you nurture them to the point where they actually spend money with you.
Now, once you've landed that customer, work isn't over yet. You've got to keep them happy and satisfied to build their customer loyalty. And so at this point, you need to think of implementing programs and incentives to sustain their loyalty and encourage their advocacy among everyone that they know. Okay, you guys. I know that was a lot. It's probably overwhelming, but no worries. One step at a time. And the good news is that there are more additional resources from Google that you can access to continue your learning. If you enjoy video lessons, subscribe to the Grow with Google YouTube channel at youtube.com slash grow with Google. The channel publishes a new video every Thursday covering topics that can help you grow your skills, careers, and businesses. If you're looking to start a new career and land a competitive paid job or build skills to grow your career, check out Google's career certificates. Google career certificates can give you a path to in-demand jobs with top employers that are currently hiring. And the certificates available are in data analytics, project management, UX design, IT support, and digital marketing and e-commerce. And you can find more information by going to grow with Google, grow.google slash certificates. Also, for those of you who are business owners and you want to do something nice for your employees, all U.S. businesses can get up to 500 scholarships each to Google Career Certificates to train their employees. These scholarships are worth up to $100,000 in workforce training for American company. And of course, as a business, you have to apply. And this offer will expire December 18, 2024. So you have almost an additional year to do this. And if you want to apply as a business on behalf of your employees, you can do so by going to grow.google slash certificates for business. So if you're just looking for yourself, it's grow.google slash certificates. If you are applying as a business for your employees, it's grow.google slash certificates for business. Okay, you guys, like I said in the beginning, this session was brought by brought to you by Grow with Google in collaboration with our two partner host organizations. And Grow with Google is an initiative to help people prepare for work, find jobs, and grow their businesses. So whether you're a job seeker, teacher, small business owner, or startup, or even a developer, there are tons of resources available for you at no cost, and you can find out more by going to google.com slash grow. You guys have been great. Thank you for sticking with me. We went over a little bit over an hour, but that's okay because hopefully you guys learned a lot. Um, before I let you go, I'm gonna take a quick look in the Q&A box and then ask our organization hosts to close things off. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so it seems like people are just saying they had a really great presentation. That's amazing. I'm glad that you guys learned a lot here. Let me see if there are any specific questions. Is there a way? What is the difference between email marketing and spamming? Email marketing is when you send um, well-timed and spaced marketing messages based on the implied interest of your customers. Spamming is when you bombard people with sales messages every single day. And there are actually some well-known retailers who do this, and I can't imagine why, because sooner or later we all unsubscribe or send them to our junk boxes. But I guess for in some ways it still works for them. Uh, but email marketing is a lot more thoughtful. You segment your lists and you only send specific messages based on the interest, the implied interest on those subsets of your list. Jasmine is asking, do you have a book or resources to recommend or reference for copywriting captions? Oh my goodness, this is a heavy one. Um, Jasmine, that, that is a very loaded question. Um, you can, if you would like, you can shoot me an email. Um, I'm gonna put my email in the chat, in the Q&A, um, because the, yeah, there's there are tons of those kinds of resources out there. And I'll be more than happy to share them with you. Okay, so to wrap things up, Ying and Lisa, if you guys wanted to make some closing remarks, that would be great. Lisa, do you want to go first? Yeah, um, thank you, Patia, for another great training. That was a lot of good information. And um, I hope everybody learned a lot from that. So thanks. <laughs> You're very welcome, Ying. Yeah, hi, thank you, Patia. And uh, just also want to say that there's a lot of information. Take yeah. one step at a time, take actions on what you learn. 
and it, it, things will happen. Yeah. Good luck, everyone. Good luck. Okay, you guys, thank you for being here. Remember, everybody gets a copy of the presentation and a link to download the recording. Enjoy your holidays and be well. Oh, Lord. <laughs>